in the shadow of this calamity that's affecting the entire world, including our region. Yeah. Uh, we would like to start by making a plea that we will do all what we can as ministers of finance to ensure that the, the, the COVID-19 calamity uh, will not translate into uh, a recession curve uh, you know, for our uh, region, for our people. And this meeting, as you know, comes uh, following the meeting of the heads of the states of the, and the heads of government of IGAD, and also our colleagues, the ministers of health yesterday. And our job really is to ensure that all the members of the IGAD, as well as the partners, and the friends of IGAD, and it's an opportunity for me also to welcome our partners and friends from the EU, from multilateral as well as bilateral uh, countries uh, to this important meeting. Uh, even though, of course, this meeting comes at a time of difficulty and challenge uh, for everybody uh, in the world, including our region. And even though that as a region, we have so far escaped the magnitude of infection and fatalities that are afflicting all the world, including other parts of Africa, we cannot afford to be complacent. So therefore we think that despite the difficult situation we are facing now, I think the initiative that were taken by our heads of states and heads of government to uh, convene uh, an IGAD meeting, as well as to call upon us to follow suit uh, as ministers of finance and also before us, before that as ministers of health is a very welcome development in the context of promoting cooperation and ensuring that not only we work on our individual countries, but also we work on a regional basis in the context of the EGAD to level the potential, uh, uh, the, the potential fallout and the impact uh, of the uh, uh, of the of the of the COVID-19 uh, in terms of the uh, economies of the region to to level that impact and to ensure that the curve is leveled as much as we can using our resources uh, because as they say charity start at home but then also to look forward to present uh, a credible and well sought out agenda so that we also get the buy-in and the support of our partners uh, the world over so without further ado uh, i would like to uh, ask uh, your excellencies uh, to uh, to comment on the agenda, should anybody would like to suggest any amendment to the agenda or to add uh, any item under AOV before I invite uh, His Excellency, the Executive Secretary, uh, to give uh, a report on the status of the situation uh, within the EGAT. Yeah, the agenda is okay with me, really. The agenda is okay. also open with me, Ethiopia. Okay, so we approve the agenda and move forward. And uh, uh, I, I guess before the uh, Dr. Uh, Gabriaho uh, give his uh, status yeah. report, maybe we should go around and introduce ourselves. Uh, yes, yes, Your Excellency. Yes. Okay. My name is Ibrahim. Al Badawi, I'm the Minister of uh, Finance and Economic Planning, Republic of Sudan, and Chair of this Chair of IGAD. and the Chair of the uh, of the Ministerial <laughs> Committee of the IGAD uh, for Economic Policy. 
My name is Warkena Gaweyo, Executive Secretary of ICAD. Your Excellencies, welcome. Let me start, let me give this to, from South Sudan. Yes, shall I call upon, uh, according to yes. the names here, Minister of Finance, yes. Republic of Djibouti. Okay, Minister of Finance, Federal Republic, uh, Fe Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Good morning, everyone. This is Admasu, State Minister of Finance, uh, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Minister of Finance, Republic of Kenya. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, my name is Yatani, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury and Planning. Uh, I am uh, present and available for engagement. Welcome. Minister of Finance, Federal Republic of Somalia. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Abrahman Bey. Minister of Finance of Somalia. Good morning, everyone. Minister of Finance, Republic of South uh, Sudan. South Sudan. Minister of Finance, Republic of Uganda. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, my name is Makia Kasaija, Minister of Finance with the Republic of Uganda. I welcome this discussion. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Now I give the floor to uh, Dr. Gabriel. Gabriel. Thank you, Your Excellency uh, Chair. I'm very happy to have you, all of you. I want to recognize our partners from European Union and later on, the Commissioner for International uh, Cooperation will have seven minutes, seven minutes intervention to have uh, exchange of uh, ideas with us, Your Excellencies, that would also be very important for our efforts. So I will, uh, I will take you directly to, to, to what exactly we were doing uh, for the next two weeks after the heads of states and governments discuss and decide upon this, this issue. So let me formally uh, 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 come to my, to my uh, uh, presentation. Excellency Dr. Ibrahim El Badawi, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Sudan and Chair of the Committee of Ikan Finance Ministers. Excellency Elias Musa Dawale, Minister of Finance, Republic of Djibouti. Excellency Atu Admasu Nabeba, Minister of Finance, State Minister of Finance, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Excellency Ambassador Ukuri Jatani, Kanacho, Cabinet Secretary, National Treasury and Planning, Republic of Kenya. Excellency Dr. Abdurrahman Dawale, Bile, Minister of Finance, Federal Republic of Somalia. Excellency Salvatore George Mabrodiet, Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Republic of South Sudan. Excellency Matia Kasaji, Minister of Finance, Republic of Uganda, dear partners, excellencies. Thank you, honorable ministers, for so quickly heading for a call to come together in this first ever EGAD meeting for ministers of finance. This meeting has been called to act upon the, resol the resolutions of the extraordinary summit of the EGAD heads of state and government that convened on 13th of March, 2020. At this meeting, your excellencies, the heads of the state and government tasked us to formulate a comprehensive regional responsive strategy to COVID-19 and similar pandemics. They also established a regional emergency fund to mobilize resources and finance the regional response strategy as well. As well. Your Excellencies, 
It is regrettable that this first meeting is as a result of the threat posed by the corona pandemic. At the same time, it is my fervent hope that we can turn this crisis into opportunity to forge stronger links between our national economies and drive forward the IGAT regional integration agenda. COVID-19 is unlikely, unlike any threat we have faced before in our region, it is invisible and insidious. It is a disease that on the surface is attacking our health, but it is symptoms and targeting our economic foundations and trying to tear apart our social fabric. And the worst of all, Your Excellencies, it is threatening our greatest and most important resource, our people. The coronavirus has already robbed our world of more than 87,000 lives so far. We must do everything we can to, to stop it from claiming any more of our people. I extend my deepest sympathies and that of the entire Igar family to the families and friends of those who have lost loved ones in this virus in our region and throughout the world. Your Excellencies, even more dangerously, this pandemic is threatening to severely disrupt the livelihood, social and economic security of 270 million of citizens of our region. The scale and impact of the loss of income, enterprise and empl employment will be many times worse than that of the disease itself. Even before the outbreak of this virus, Your Excellencies, the global economy was slowing down and going to recession. Now with the viral outbreak forcing us into lockdown, the impact on our region will be even much higher. A recent study commissioned by the African Union and titled Impact of the Coronavirus on the African Economy showed that 20 million jobs in both the formal and informal sectors were, were at risk on the continent due to this pandemic. The study also reports that growth forecasts for our continent have been revised down, downwards with vital forex earnings such as oil and gas, tourism and air transport, flower and horticulture, livestock and cash crop exports being in the most affected. This would put a severe strain on our ability, Your Excellencies, to raise the resources needed for the additional health, social and economic measures we have to put in place to overcome the corona pandemic. Honorable Ministers, as you know very well, COVID-19 is much more than a health crisis. If we do not act fast to arrest it and minimize its impact, the virus has potential to mute into a social and economic catastrophe. Worse still, this pandemic comes at a time when we are already grappling with other significant challenges. Our region is now grappling with the three of coronas, namely the coronavirus itself, food insecurity, and the menace of the desert locusts that are making to come back. In these strange circumstances, Your Excellencies, we are faced with the burden of mobilizing additional scale and specialized resources needed to fight COVID-19, including large-scale testing capabilities, ICU ventilators, isolation and quarantine facilities, testing equipment, infectious disease specialists, nurses, and technicians. The EGAD region is deeply thankful to our healthcare workers, Your Excellencies. They are truly the heroes and the heroines we need to in our darkest hour. We owe them to inter, eter, eternal depth of gratitude for the personal risks and sacrifice they are making in the front lines are to keep us safe from this disease and to care for those 
have become infected by it. This is only way to protect our people and pay the debt we owe to our heroic health workers. By acting on the directive of the extraordinary summit of Igar heads of state and governments, your excellencies, Paris formulate a robust regional response strategy and second, ensure that it has enough resources to wage the war on COVID-19 and to win. Excellencies, I am happy to inform you that we have already started and made significant progress on the first part of this journey. Yesterday, we held a meeting with the ministers of health to discuss and agree upon the element of regional response strategy. Today, we will work with you to come up with ways of costing, budgeting, and mobilizing the monetary and material resources we need to win this war. I would like to add that we formulate this regional strategy guided by the principle of your excellencies. No country is safe until every country is safe. However, as we do so, let us also bear in mind that the economy of our region is different compared to other parts of the world that have been significantly affected by the coronavirus. Therefore, we cannot wholly adopt the measures that are being practiced in pandemic-affected countries with more developing, developed economies. So, I would like to propose four main issues for our discussion this morning, Your Excellencies. Number one, a regional resource mobilization plan toward combating COVID-19, accompanying coordination mechanisms at regional and national level. The critical agenda here is, here is how to mobilize contributions for the regional emergency fund established by the heads of the states and governments to fight pandemics and strengthen national health systems. Number two, the regional economic and social interventions to complement health measures taken to flatten the viral curve of COVID-19. These measures we discussed should be acutely sensitive to the needs of vulnerable population in our region, namely refugees, host communities, internally displaced peoples, migrants, and the urban poor. Coordinated, number three, coordinated macro and microeconomic measures to maintain regional economic stability and mitigate the immediate social and economic impact of COVID-19, including protection of supply chains, especially for essential services, such as good supplies and the health sector. Debt cancellation and physical stimulus package for all IGAD countries. Number four, strategies to safeguard and prepare the regional economy to not only bounce back, but bounce forward in the shortest time possible when we overcome the, the COVID-19 pandemic. In this aspect, Your Excellencies, the lessons learned from the Ebola outbreak in West Africa are very important and should serve as per permanent reminder of what economic interventions we should not forget. In conclusion, Your Excellencies, I put forward the draft call for action for your deliberation and adoption. In it, in it are pr proposals on actions that we can take toward the objectives. I would like to request honorable ministers that you to further consider it and our model of regular solidarity. Thank you very much for your attention. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Executive Secretary. Uh, I gather that uh, the next item in the agenda is to invite the honorable ministers to uh, make brief statements uh, about the issues in question uh, for this uh, unprecedented meeting of the Ministers of Finance of the IGAD. Uh, so let me first invite the Minister of Finance from the Republic of Djibouti. Okay, 
So then, there let comes me then Vicar invite... Martinez, the next one, Your Excellency. Yes. So let me then invite His Excellency, uh, the Minister of Finance from the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, colleagues, ministers. Uh, thank you also for inviting us, for IGAR, for organizing this very important and timely uh, discussion. The COVID-19 is the first and the foremost a global humanitarian challenge. It is already disturbing millions of people's livelihoods. With a disproportionate impact on poor households and the small and the informal business. And the pace of this disruption is likely to accelerate in the weeks ahead. Ethiopia confirmed its first coronavirus case in mid of March. The government has taken active preventive preparation and the control measures to curb the further spread of COVID-19 and the taken various measures to mitigate the impact of the outbreak on the economy. The government has also aggressively worked on its preparedness and the prevention effort. In doing so, the government is strengthening and providing training to health professionals, establishing isolation and quarantine centers for suspected and confirmed cases. Laboratory diagnosis of COVID-19, procurement of medical supplies, commu community engagement, and the risk awareness campaign, screening of incoming passengers at the international uh, entry points, and a compulsory 14 days quarantine for arriving passengers. Despite the ongoing pre preventive and the control measures, by the government to contain the spread of the virus. The risk of general spread is very high in the light of the underlying social and the infrastructure setting of the country. We are now working under the assumption that Ethiopia will have or already have a community transmission of COVID-19. Accordingly, the government has declared a state of emergency, recognizing the severity of the problem. The next three months will be very critical in how fast and effectively we can repeal the challenges we are facing with this virus. Hence, so we need to step up and coordinate our efforts to prevent the virus from harming people in the economy at large. In this critical time of coordination, coordination is a very crucial to serving lives and help us to make appropriate use of our limited resources. Accordingly, the government has prepared a comprehensive national multi-sectoral COVID emergency response plan to coordinate and holistically respond to the pandemic and mitigate the threats it poses. The multi-sectoral humanitarian and also emergency plan takes a sector-specific approach to COVID-19 preparedness and the response in agriculture, education, food, non-food, nutrition, health, wash, protection, and refugees, cross-cutting coordination, and other aspects. To be implemented over the next three months, the plan requires 1.6 billion US dollars. The majority of the finance resource, which is 90% is allocated for emergency food distribution, the health sector response, the provision of emergency shelter and the non-food items, wash, water and the sanitation and the hygiene program. 
considering the magnitude of the social economic impact of the virus and the urgent need of the to implement a response plan we need to have a very strong <coughs> coordination and the pooling our resources together good we have seen the power of this pandemic to overwhelm the health sector yeah. system Hospital. and Hospital. bringing Hospital. the entire economy to stand still. The tremendous delay in the spread of the virus in our region, given a valuable time to absorb best practice and strengthen the national system to the public health preparedness, including for disease containment and the diagnosis. A comprehensive economic stimulus package with targeted physical, monetary, and the financial market measures will be needed to help affected households and the business through the pandemic and the keeping intact first in the economy and the financial system to quickly recover once the breakout is also controlled. So we strongly call upon and also fully agree the initiatives that the IGAD has taken in terms of coordinating ourselves. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm, I'm not hearing. Open your micro. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Hello, everyone. Yes. We can hear you. Welcome on board. The secretary, I think, should take uh, the floor and guide the meeting. The statements. One Makle, I know we work in a Makle. Okay. Uh, in the event that we haven't heard from the secretary, shall we move forward and Invite uh, the Honorable Minister from Kenya. Uh, Chair, <clears throat> let me take this opportunity to thank you very much for convening this meeting and our colleagues for accepting to be on this platform. Uh, because more than any other time, given the challenges at hand, we need to stand together, we need to speak in one voice so that the weight of our voice and the, the stature of the region can be heard and uh, uh, be dealt with uh, as one unit. The problem at hand at the moment is not only a health challenge, it's a sophisticated socioeconomic, uh, you know, <coughs> environmental challenge. And more than any other time, we need a lot of resources to fight the challenges, uh, the, both the health challenges, and try to look for ways of mitigating against the adversity uh, to our people. In Kenya, uh, given the onset of the problem, we've gone, uh, you know, quickly, to make sure that uh, we put the necessary preparation by upgrading a number of health facilities by making, uh, creating also isolation unit. Uh, we have also stepped up uh, screening. And uh, for me, the most important thing and uh, as, uh, as, as uh, finance ministers of this region, uh, more importantly, what needs to come out clearly is that uh, given the challenges at hand, it's not only a health problem, it's affected livelihood, it has affected the economy. And it might take a longer time for this economy of the region uh, to recover. What do we need to do? Uh, as Kenya, our president uh, has pronounced a stimulus package that encompasses uh, you know, a situation where we caution the residents, the citizen of this country against the adverse effects of of the lack of jobs, lack of opportunities, and possibly even uh, increase in prices of uh, uh, staple food. Additionally, uh, we also 
worked hard and make sure that you know we sustain and cushion the various business uh, entities, the private sector, mainly uh, the small and micro enterprises against this shock by reducing on the value added tax, uh, by also uh, giving reprieve and reducing on the percentage of the income tax, along very many other measures. Additionally, we've also injected uh, you know, about $100 million to support uh, the, the, the vulnerable within the population, particularly the elderly, uh, people who live below the poverty line who have serious challenges. And we are now working hard to make sure that we address the challenges of the informal settlements in urban centers by giving them opportunities to get uh, clean water, uh, food, uh, and other support. And more importantly, we are no, have no idea for how long this problem is going to persist. It may be for a long time, but that's our regional approach is key. As a result of this, it's very important not only for Kenya, but the entire region for, for us now to revise our budget. And one of the fundamental challenges is the balance of, uh, that requires uh, uh, rethinking is the balance of uh, payment support. We need to support our budget for us to continue sustaining the key essential uh, services. Number two, we also need to think about given the drastic fall in revenue to support our budget and also to undertake the uh, you know, situation on, uh, uh, on when the situations were normal, what do we do? This is going to strain us very much, particularly in the cases of uh, debt repayment is one area that we need a, a collective approach because we are likely to get a serious strain given the drastic fall of revenue uh, and the other competing need, needs, particularly needs and otherwise, that we need to continue uh, undertaking is going to be a very serious shortfall for resources to pay our debts. This is one area that we need to come out clearly uh, and engage uh, our partners uh, both at the multilateral level and also at the, uh, at the bilateral level. Because each one of us, when we now hunt separately, it becomes very difficult. We rather have that strong voice. And as a resolution of a uh, council of ministers, we need to have uh, progressively balance support, uh, budget support, and uh, debt uh, rescheduling, how we are going to manage all these. But uh, the timing is very right, and I'm happy with the agenda before us. We are going to prosecute uh, in details because all those instabilities not only unique to our region, but it will affect uh, the entire globe. But for more fundamentally, because of the size and the complexity of our economy, we may be in for a bigger problem unless we have a roadmap that encompasses all of us, that puts us in one strategy. Even despite the challenges, we also need to rethink on how best we can continue sustaining business, particularly flow of goods. Uh, how we need to come out of this would be key because we depend on each other. The flow of goods between one border to the other would be key without necessarily compromising the health situations of the, of the people uh, making the movement. Uh, Chair, thank you very much. I, I submit and uh, I'll give opportunity to the next speaker. Yeah. Your Excellency Chair. Yes, the Honorable Minister from the Federal Republic of Somalia. You have the floor. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and uh, the Honorable Minister is present here and the representatives of uh, other organizations, particularly the EU. Uh, I want to uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to meet. I was told and I read that this is the first time that the ministries of finance are meeting. Uh, that means that every challenge has an opportunity. And uh, if, if, uh, if, if there is anything positive about the coronavirus, it is to ask us to meet or to make uh, possible for us to meet. So let me thank you very much. And briefly, I would say that uh, 
I think it's very important that we collectively uh, voice our view, uh, our views uh, on, on what needs to be done. We have national challenges, and I think national challenges are, are, are very important, but national challenges are also very much linked to the regional challenges. And therefore, while we are all individually very busy on the national challenges and, and, and doing whatever it is that we can, given our resources, to address the challenges nationally, we are here to address the, the regional, the regional one, the regional one. Uh, we are concerned uh, about the regional one because we are communities that are very much interconnected with borders that are very loose and therefore uh, people mobility is, is very, uh, is very quick. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, no, no hard and uh, fast partitions of our countries. Therefore, we see the importance of us addressing this at the regional level. Now, now we are here, we are here to discuss uh, regional issues. And at the end of the day, we are going to identify uh, uh, and distinguish what is regional and what is national. <clears throat> by all means, we have to help every nation address this by, by itself and assist uh, countries to, to do that. But we are here to see what can be uh, regional. I am saying that because uh, the organizations that we are going to submit our proposals to have national uh, allocations, national funds, they also have regional windows. And it is the regional window that we want to benefit from. Therefore, as somebody said in, uh, earlier, we have to identify areas of support as a region led by uh, none other than the EGAD Secretariat. I would say these have to do with the borders that we share and the people that cross these borders and the spread of this uh, terrible disease from one border to another. Therefore, I will say, uh, while we of course have to assist each, each country do its own nationally, we have to identify certain posts uh, in, the, in the border areas. I would say, for example, here in Somalia, I am concerned about the long borders that we have uh, with our neighbors, where people move around freely, very freely. These are the areas that we have to identify particular uh, uh, towns that are in the, in the border and assist them to have the equipment and the quarantine and the ICUs and uh, the, the facilities necessary uh, for, for the people around that area moving around uh, to be able to, to be addressed. We need to find, well, we need to find a particular posts. We need to cost them and then bring all those costs together. And then that will be, that will be our, our proposal. I would say that uh, the study that is proposed by, by, by uh, one, of the, uh, one of the proposals we have, it has to be done and done very, very quickly. So we know exactly where that is. For example, I am looking at uh, the Djibouti Somalia border. There is one entry and people are moving around. There is absolutely no facility there. There are a number of uh, border areas, pass areas between Somalia and Ethiopia and Somalia and Kenya. And there is absolutely no facility. And if you go there, the information we are getting uh, and you can understand the reason people move around. In the evening, they are decide in the morning, they are on the other side. And therefore, these are the areas that can benefit from the regional windows of these institutions. And therefore, while the same institutions, uh, we, we can also benefit nationally, uh, we have to identify what you get secretariat and cost it, and then uh, have, have a specific amount of money proposed uh, to this. I will, I will then come back later on some of the specific issues, I would say in next meeting, when we have the cost and all that identified and consolidated, <clears throat> sorry, we, we need uh, probably the banks uh, to participate in our next meeting. Uh, that is the, the African Development Bank, the World Bank, uh, the EU, of course, uh, who is here, and a number of other institutions that are, that are, that are keen on, on helping us. Let, let me, let, let me uh, stop here. And I will come back later on when we go to the rest of the, uh, 
uh, the, the rest of the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, I would like now to invite the Honorable Minister from the Republic of South Sudan. Yeah. Your Excellency, also we, can, we have to recognize the coming of the Minister of Finance of Djibouti, Mr. Elias. Welcome, Honorable Minister. Should I? It's my? Yes. Hello, Mr. Secret Executive Secretary and Honorable Ministers, uh, dear all. Sorry for being a little bit uh, delayed to connect with you because of a technical issue. Please do not consider the name under which I'm appearing. This is not me. <laughs> uh, so first of all, uh, I would like to really extend my appreciation and the Djibouti government appreciation to IGAT Secretary uh, for uh, organizing this uh, VC meeting uh, with all together with our uh, brothers, uh, honorable ministers of IGAT, as well as uh, our friends from EU I'm observing. And uh, with regard to Djibouti, as you can imagine, uh, at this point of time, I think we are the second uh, most affected uh, country in, of this uh, COVID-19, uh, with uh, the number increasing day after day. The peak uh, for this last week was uh, three days back, which we went from uh, 56 to 126 as of uh, yesterday, and most probably uh, more uh, positive tested uh, our uh, Djiboutian fellow to be announced today. So from uh, the very beginning, the government of Djibouti started having uh, its own uh, actions so with our own budget by preparing the facilities since almost uh, two months. We transformed uh, two major hospitals uh, one which used to be the French military hospitals as the quarantine uh, hospital and uh, also testing center. And the second one, which uh, was in 40 kilometers away from Djibouti in a small city called the uh, Arta, uh, which used to have a quite a large facility for that region we totally uh, deplaced the, uh, the, the previous services to another hospital, smaller hospital, and make that hospital, Arta Hospital, as a treatment hospital, which all the positive cases are all transferred to, to it. We actually also ordered numbers of uh, required equipment and uh, medicines. We, at the same time, uh, created an emergency and solidarity fund led by His Excellency the President. And uh, the initial capital was uh, advanced by the budget, uh, national budget, with uh, approximately around $8 million. At the same time, so we made an appeal for solidarity, and the number has now uh, grown significantly with the support of uh, all Djiboutians, uh, individually as well as uh, in, uh, companies, private uh, sector companies. We, as you can imagine, are uh, very much in shortage of uh, in requirements in terms of uh, in, uh, breeding uh, and equipment, I don't know how you call it in, uh, in English, Hans can help me, in uh, res respiratory and equipment. At the same time, uh, in ICU facilities are limited, but again, we believe we are uh, 
at this point of time lucky because we have no uh, yet uh, the the most difficult uh, and, and level of uh, threat on, against the I mean the virus. We have no yet uh, requirement of uh, respiratory equipment, and either uh, for IC, ICU uh, in, uh, in treatment yet. So far, to be honest, and uh, we ourselves started a treating for the patient with the chloroquine uh, for to some extent and uh, it's showing positive uh, result with the 19 uh, successful successful uh, treatment and uh, of course this is strictly under control of uh, the medical uh, team under the control of Minister of uh, Health. At the other hand, we started testing uh, more and more uh, people, but uh, at the, to this extent, what we believe is the situation is a little bit out of our control because until now we had the chance to, because of the size of uh, the country, we were able to really try and track and the contacts at uh, level one to three. But since the last two days, we now found additional uh, zones which are of spread, spread. And uh, one of the hospital, and in Djibouti hospital, one of the largest in Djibouti hospital was found with uh, a COVID and positive uh, test people. I mean, uh, afterward, we, we had uh, the result and uh, that increased very much and dramatically the number. When I, when I look at uh, now from the other dimension of uh, this crisis, as all of us, we have a different level of uh, and uh, pathway in uh, on and the risks on socioeconomics. Number one, as you most of uh, you know, uh, from our region and including at a uh, country's level, and uh, GDP drops and uh, it's most probably happening. And uh, as uh, some of the colleagues were explaining, the trade balance of uh, going to be worsened, worsen it, job and uh, livelihood uh, to be lost or mostly lost already in, for us in, in quite a number of sectors, including hospitality sector, as well as building and other uh, in a trade uh, sectors. At the other hand, in social, uh, you know, we, we are very much in, uh, concerned about the vulnerability of Djibouti because and still uh, the resilience uh, is not that much yet. And uh, the first impact uh, we are observing is on uh, those numbers because the majority, I mean, in our economy, it's mostly in the informal sector. And uh, with the, the confinement and restrictions of movement. The first population which were mostly hurt was the one living on day to day. And uh, so far, 67,000 jobs from uh, the informal sector are considered as uh, lost. From the other hand, we need still to in, uh, keep and the discipline of uh, the confinement. But at the same time, you know how much in some area of slums, it's very much difficult to exercise it. In our uh, opinion, at this point of time, we took it in, uh, from the Minister of Finance uh, at the government level, numbers of measure by number one, uh, giving uh, an, an, Allow, I mean, uh, postponing the payment of uh, 
and all kind of taxes. And we also uh, gave a uh, vacation on uh, in, uh, social security in, uh, in payments from the companies. We also asked all the public enterprises like uh, telecommunication as well as uh, utility to postpone the collection of their invoices to all uh, Djibouti companies, private sector companies. During last week, we had an intensive uh, dialogue with the private sector in by sector by sector. We concluded after almost 10 days, we now have a better uh, understanding of their requirement and their uh, needs. Of course, we might not be able to uh, extend uh, our uh, support to everyone. We are going to select and really to, according to the capacity of our budget, in treat as by priorities. Now, what in the coming uh, uh, short period of time uh, we are afraid is uh, the budget will definitely, and, uh, I mean, we are going to introduce very soon at the cabinet as well as to the parliament uh, to make correction on the uh, uh, law de finance budget, uh, 2020 budget because it's not any more relevant. And uh, at the same time, looking for uh, mobilization and from uh, different partners in order to scope first the requirement in terms of uh, health and sanitary in, uh, impact, then for social and uh, economical impact to be addressed as soon as possible. To finish at this point of time, my, in, uh, to, to, I, I would like to shorten by saying this, Djibouti particularity in terms of uh, in, uh, in, in regional perspective is almost 100% of uh, uh, Ethiopia and uh, economy is depending on uh, Djibouti and uh, port services. And as you know, of course, both of us challenged by this in uh, COVID, still we consider as a most strategic uh, sector in order to let the traffic flow as easy as it used to be. At the same time, to protect, as you know, the corridor generally is one of the challenging uh, and, uh, and source of uh, virus spread. As we also observed in, for AIDS uh, issue, the corridor has to be properly protected. And one of the urgent action at regional level I see is at the cross border, including at Somalia uh, cross border, because numbers of uh, in people which were affected also came from Somalia. And uh, Somalia border with Djibouti, we observe it is one of the major source of uh, in transmission. And uh, at the same time from Ethiopia side, because drivers are uh, arriving by thousands from one way to another. Each country is affected means it will be spread at regional level and we need to put some kind of uh, testing and uh, facilities, make sure that at the corridor we are managing in, as one, putting some facilities in some rest areas and uh, keep that community protected from, uh, in a, from the virus. Otherwise, it will get in a very, very dangerous spread which we might not be able to control. In terms of uh, in, uh, supply, I think now it's time now for eager uh, community to look at how best we can together in, uh, make our uh, requirement in, in terms of supply, in terms of uh, uh, medical supply. 
in, as an EGAD in uh, unity and uh, preposition for the landlocked countries to some point like Djibouti and Kenya could be the place to be redistributed for any kind of uh, and for Djibouti we have a uh, uh, regional and uh, humanitarian logistic hub with WFP for food items but as well as for non-food items from UNICEF and uh, UNHCR and others. That facility could be extended to WFP and to WHO in uh, facilities to be in, uh, also considered and concentrated, whatever coming from in, uh, the tra maritime and, uh, transportations. So dealing the supply chain for emergency in our uh, region it's another uh, challenge we must uh, look at it and get solve it at the same time what we are observing is some countries abroad like the most uh, biggest exporter in commodities some of them started putting some measures for like uh, the top important commodities like rice in uh, audible oils. What we require is a uh, collective action in order to uh, really ask those uh, countries, those partners like India, Turkish for uh, wheat flowers or whatsoever uh, things to give uh, special facilities at this critical time for uh, commodities uh, products to not uh, penalize again for uh, food security purpose. So different ideas are available. This meeting is for sure the first one only. And we are uh, very much uh, and, uh, thankful to EGAD, to all of our uh, partners who are uh, participating. What all we know also when it comes to the Horn of Africa initiative in EU, ADB, as well as World Bank at this stage for this COVID-19 response, we should look at how fast we can scope and look at different possibilities, including and mainly also in a budget in support because this crisis it started being a budget crisis also for every one of us so one of the major response of this crisis will be also budget support to all of us may i take opportunity on, uh, to extend our uh, warm welcome to uganda and sudan being and part of uh, Horn of Africa initiative as an observer uh, we were discussing uh, during last meetings and then of course to be full uh, member of uh, Horn of Africa initiative I'm asking this uh, I'm extending this invitation under the control of uh, my friend Hans from uh, Brussels I thank you all dear friends and brothers Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. And I uh, would like now to invite the Honorable Minister uh, of Finance of the Republic of South Sudan. Sorry, I forgot the invitation for Horn of Africa Initiative, our brother Raz from South Sudan too as observer. Igad is there also. Mm -hmm. South Sudan. Your Excellency from South Sudan, Minister. 
You can present your uh, Honorable Minister from South Sudan, can you hear us? The technical people. Philip, you are listening. Huh? Yes, the Honorable Mr. from South Sudan, can you hear us? <coughs> huh? I guess, uh, Mr. Executive, Mr. Executive Secretary, Secretary, can we, shall we move uh, until maybe yes. this technical problem is fixed? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have already made some informal remarks. Uh, I would uh, like to take the opportunity to speak slightly more formally, uh, briefly by saying that uh, okay by saying that uh, for the case of the republic of sudan as you all know we are experiencing very substantial transformation both political and economic after the glorious december revolution of 2019 and Right now, we are dealing, we had to deal with the impending uh, ramification of the COVID-19 uh, over and above the other challenges that we have been dealing with as a nascent uh, government uh, tasked with the responsibility of effecting the transition from uh, uh, the past regime that have ra uh, wrought considerable destruction and havoc, and havoc on, the con on the Sudanese economy and society. Uh, as regard the steps to level the recession curve for the case of Sudan, we are obviously like all of us, we cannot afford to be complacent, uh, even though we have so far as a region and as countries uh, within IGAD, we have escaped uh, major um, infection rates, but obviously we have to prepare for uh, all circumstances, including the necessity of uh, uh, imposing uh, major total or partial lockdown. And if this happens, this will produce, as we now know from the recent uh, economic policy literature, that there will be a major recession curve. And our responsibility should be to actually level this uh, recession curve. Uh, we have a five-pronged plan, starting with providing considerable support uh, in as much resources that we can garner to the health system. Uh, second, a family support, especially for the informal sector. And like all of our economies, our informal sectors are quite uh, vast, and so to the extent that there will be uh, a lockdown, at least in the major urban centers, like in our case, uh, the capital of Khartoum and other major cities, we will have to deal with uh, uh, the situation of providing livelihood in terms of uh, uh, cash as well as commodities, necessary, necessary commodities to the families affected by, uh, from the informal sector by a potential lockdown. Third, we uh, cannot also rule out the possibility of uh, a major layoff of workers in the formal private sector. So to this extent, uh, we are also considering providing uh, 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 insurance, unemployment insurance for 
private sector workers from the organized uh, formal private sector that uh, may, may actually experience uh, laying off by their uh, businesses and companies. Uh, uh, fourth, we uh, are also considering major fiscal and monetary uh, reform measures uh, to help the private sector, such as uh, freezing loan payment and also uh, providing tax holidays for some uh, businesses that uh, will be affected by a potential lockdown. Uh, in order to finance, uh, you know, this kind of program, like all uh, countries in the world, uh, are developed and emerging and, 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 uh, and developing countries uh, alike, uh, we plan to undertake major reforms in terms of fuel subsidies, which is one of the uh, deliberating uh, uh, heritage or baggage that we inherited from the former regime. Uh, it accounted for about 36% of total budget or total expenditure. So there will be a major reform uh, as well as liberalizing of the exchange rate in order to enhance the private sector activities and to empower, uh, provide the right incentives for producers and exporters. Uh, however, uh, this will not be enough. You know, obviously, as we say, charity start at home. At home, we have to do our 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 own work. Uh, we have to put our house in order, and we will do so. But then, we will also look forward to actually cooperate with our partners and neighbors. For example, in the case of the EGAT, we strongly support the uh, regional uh, rescue program in partnership with our uh, uh, partners in the EU and bilateral donors as well as the multilateral donors. And in this context, uh, I would like to highlight the importance of uh, the initiative taken by the Sudanese Prime Minister on his capacity as the president of the IGAD uh, in order to uh, uh, res uh, address uh, the initiative that addresses uh, the issues of the IGAD collectively to the international financial institutions, especially uh, the World Bank and the IMF, but also the UN uh, institutions uh, to actually support the IGAD as a region in order also to level the regional recession curve. Because as a region, even though, uh, as I said earlier, we have so far escaped a major infection rate, nonetheless, our economies are relatively fragile compared to other countries, even by African standards, because of the crises affected with con uh, associated with conflicts and, 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 and droughts and and, and locust infection uh, and invasion and various other things that actually the IGAD as a region does deserve uh, a program uh, from the international development community. And we think that uh, this is very important uh, to actually highlight. In addition, uh, once more, I think it is incumbent on us as a community to take initiative to show the rest of the world that we actually uh, put our money where our mouth is, as they say. And in this context, I would like to commend the, uh, the uh, Republic of Kenya for uh, taking the initiative of putting some resources uh, to this fund. And I would like to call on all of us to follow suit of the leadership that was taken by Kenya so that we are in a position uh, to uh, convince uh, other partners to help us fin uh, finance uh, this fund. And also, I think it's very important for us to think seriously in this time of adversity about regional cooperation and to deepen our economic partnership in terms of trade and regional infrastructure, because uh, our fate is tied together. We have to actually uh, argue very strongly, all of us as a group, in favor of countries like Sudan and Somalia, who are yet, uh, maybe Somalia is, uh, is on its way to be 
uh, rehabilitated into the international financial community soon, but still uh, these countries, these two countries would need the support of the other members of the EGAD in order to have access to much needed support in order to deal with this uh, impending calamity. So without further ado, let me stop here. And I can see now the Honorable Minister from South Sudan, if he can hear us. Uh, I would like yeah. to invite him to, uh, to, give, uh, uh, to make his presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ibrahim Al Badawi. Do you hear me? Do you hear me now? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Th thank you very much, Dr. Ibadawi, chairman of this ministerial uh, uh, conference, my colleagues, the ministers, the executive director. First, let me I assure you that the government of South Sudan has taken up this coronavirus very seriously. The government has set up a high, a high level task force to, to be chaired by the president himself and then deputized by the first deputy president, the first vice president. And I'm sure our Minister of Health yesterday in their conference has assured the region what the steps we are doing. by this virus, the COVID-19. First, South Sudan depends primarily on the oil, about 70% of our budget. And we estimated at the benchmark price for our budget estimates at $55 per barrel. But now the price has dropped below that assessment, which we base our budget estimates to about 23 last 30 years of June of, of, of March and now it is over 30 but still it is over it is over 50 percent of what we are, we were getting and so our budget estimates for our operations is terribly curtailed by this virus also the non-oil revenues which are supposed to augment the oil revenues by 30%, is also effective because the trade between us, our six neighbors, had been curtailed because of the closure of the borders, except vital relief of uh, items, and only those areas that, that are where we can get more revenues through customs, and I think that will also affect our budget. And in this area, we consider that the best case scenario, we have made a projection of total revenue, both oil and non-oil, could be approximately 4 billion South Sudanese pounds or 25 million monthly for the remainder of the fiscal year up to June 30th of this year. Also, the expenditure side, we have a revision of the budget to adjust for potential impact of the COVID-19 on the remainder of the fiscal year 2019-2020. And the projected expenditure for the final quarter is estimated at 49 billion. This includes salaries and wages, 13 billion, use of goods and services, 6 billion, transfers to the states, 6 billion, capital expenditure, 14 billion, other interest payments, 298 million. Additional contingencies of 8 billion to cater for additional personnel which are coming through peace agreement where we have to absorb a large part of the rebel forces. And also the other uh, sectors which have been affected by the peace agreement, like we have five vice presidents. That needs a lot of money in our budget. And in summary, the total we need now for the expenditure is 308 million. And for the revenue, it is 75 million, which gives us 233 million USD. But for those things, we have policy options. 
The options available to South Sudan to fund the budget are limited. We are exploring the following options to determine which is best suited for our next, for our Panthers in South Sudan. Of course, we are not an island. What has happened here is not only to South Sudan or to our neighbors, it has affected all of us. It is a surprise thing. First, we just came out of war, and before we could even settle from coming out of war, locusts land in from the Horn of Africa and East Africa, and is still now hovering around. Secondly, we have also the effect of the what has happened during the, these internal wars. And so the coronavirus has added more problems to us than before. And although it is an international uh, problem, we also we thank the, the AGAT for having a bonanza regional finance ministers so that we can put our heads together and ask the international financial institution, the World Bank, the IMF, the African Development Bank, the African Action Bank, and other institutions to step in so that we could have uh, an option to avert this catastrophic uh, virus that has affected the entire world. Yeah. And also the opposite, well, to, for us, we should start, hello, hello, hello. Yes, we yes, go start, on. Yes, we should start first tightening expenditure management by prioritizing key government spending to reflect the expected revenue shortfall and prevent collapse of the core function of the government. That is the main function of the government, the, the institutions, and the, particularly the service ministries, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Education, and also the security organs, and also agriculture itself, which is the backbone of our country. We will also engage with partners on the potential implication on the expected physical space contraction which we will be facing. We are now preparing our budget for 2020-2021. But since the, the, the oil, which is 70% of the budget has fallen, and the, the rise is expected to be very slow, we will need the budget coverage. As number two, external borrowing. Given the contracted fiscal space globally, the outlook for the external borrowing is not very positive but we shall explore this option aggressively. And of course, with our partners, they do understand our position as well as our neighbors. And so this forum will put us together to explore what are the possible ways in helping us to resuscitate our economy. Three, domestic borrowing. We will explore the opportunity also to secure financing, but our domestic, Business is not that much because we just came out from the war. Most of our uh, banks, foreign and domestic, were affected by the, this uh, internal war. And so they are now trying to come up to rebuild themselves. And so getting any help from them is just a, it's something that we cannot depend on. And also the fourth is to secure from our development partners to fill the gaps and mitigate the negative impact of this COVID-19. And in fact, I do really, Dr. Badawi and the executive director, I do thank you all, all of you for what have uh, been made now to be our first meeting, because usually if you people are in one region affected by the same problem, it is good always to be together. And then to ask relevant support based on factual evidences that has affected the budgets and also the business. Especially in our economy, the, the lower group, that is the poorer group, is the one affected. How? It is because if we close down the markets and we are not going to give them the financial support, then we are creating another catastrophe of putting these people in danger because they are daily income comes from their daily sales or whatever they have on food, on the bicycles, or whatever they, they do, whether it is uh, tea 
places, bananas, whatever it is, fruits, and the rest that they carry out to carry their daily lives. And these are the areas which are usually affected by this coronavirus. We have imposed the social distances in the areas in the market. We have asked our youth not to be near each other, at least one meter apart. And also in the offices, we have closed our offices to be having half day. Now all our offices are closed at one o'clock so that the people go to their houses and then be prepared to make sure that the children are not allowed to, to be also roaming in the streets. So this disease is something that is contagious, which is not like Ebola. It is something that it is, even if you have somebody who has passed and was staying on the bench, which is in the street for the people just to sit in, that person will contract it after he sat on that bench after that person left. And so the, the repercussions for this uh, COVID-19 are very, very, very dangerous. And so our economy is not even very much uh, supporting these areas because of being unable to, to help the, those areas which we have closed down. Locking down is also good to protect us, but does it protect the vulnerable groups we do not have the, the option how to survive. And I think what we did as finance ministers to see what the uh, development partners can help, and these are the areas we will put you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Uh, so last but not least, our colleague, uh, the Honorable Minister from Uganda. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Chairman, and the Secretary General, and the colleagues. Once again, I bring greetings to you from the Secretary who has focused quite a lot of energy on helping Uganda uh, to be saved from this scourge of COVID-19. First of all, can I also bring his condolences and my own condolences for those of you who have lost your citizens. Now, I, I, I want to concentrate on three things. One, here for us in Uganda, our focus is how to save lives, first and foremost, respective what is happening for businesses and the economy, but how to save life, lives in the short term. So that's where our focus is. Uh, we are in the economy, as you may be uh, picking it from the press, we have almost shut down. There is virtually no economic activity except in, in farms, but in, in towns, no shops, most of them are closed, except in those that either are providing food, like the supermarkets, and also which are providing medical facilities. So that's one point number one, to ensure that we, the people know this, the spread of this uh, disease does not expand, and even when it expands, if, if, if where it has, we, we, we make sure that the, the people are treated and they, they cure. That's point number one. Point number two, for us, we have seen this outbreak also as an opportunity. It has given us an opportunity to think inwards now to ensure that we produce what we've been hitherto importing where it is possible. So even before I came here, we were discussing this very matter in a meeting on how to what we call import substitution and we have identified a number of products that we can now, and some have already started producing, uh, like the sanitizers now, what was, this was a very small business, but now here, uh, because we have all the virtual all the ingredients for sanitizers, uh, the business is moving very well. Therefore, I am also calling upon me, we, our members, uh, to think alike because we shall need different remarks eventually. So we are, we, 
Those who know us are in East African community, but in England is slightly bigger than East African community. We should look now to our neighbors, what can they produce and supply us, rather than depending uh, on the outside world. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, I'm full in support of the establishment of the emergency fund uh, for this COVID-19 and other diseases outbreaks. If we had the money for dance for us in Uganda here, uh, if we had the money, uh, maybe we wouldn't have been where we are now. So we are encouraging uh, as much as possible that this fund be set up and we support it. Uh, you know, here we have now another challenge. I, I know my brothers in Kenya and sisters in Kenya, and I think some in Ethiopia, the, the locust. The locust is, uh, is something we, 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 have, we have now put aside, but here to us now in Uganda, it's become a big issue because now the locusts are we're talking to the Minister of Agriculture, virtually the whole northeastern Uganda. The locals have become now another problem which we have to address. So, to me, uh, I'm saying we should work together as a team. We share information, we share uh, ideas, uh, and work as a block to ensure that the lives, our, the lives of our people, uh, are saved. And then we can now begin to think about to trade among ourselves so that. Uh, Seriously, trade, trade among ourselves so that we, we do not have to depend all, all the time from uh, for the country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Mister. So I guess this concludes the uh, part of the agenda regarding the statements by the Excellencies, the Igad Ministers of Finance, and I think. Uh, would like to invite to ask the executive secretary to advise us as I think we might have to be a little bit uh, concerned about time now, time management. Yeah. Uh, we do have actually a set of interrelated uh, items. Uh, Your Excellency, this, uh, Your Excellency. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to get. I'm going to give you the floor. Just let me finish what I. Uh, like okay. Okay. Yeah, so I think probably, uh, obviously we need to discuss uh, and share ideas, but I think probably if we can do that very efficiently, it would be better. But let me actually give the floor back to the executive secretary to advise us how to proceed on this particular uh, item of the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Excellency Ministers, for this very important uh, meeting which we share which has are very, very valuable ideas uh, based upon the decision of our heads of states and governments. We are uh, uh, working on a <coughs> strategic plan to how to combat uh, this uh, uh, virus. But before we go to the discussion, the discussion is, Your Excellency, this is the same items that, that we have in the uh, communique, and we can make, we can discuss all these four items collectively. And I can already, I, uh, I forwarded to you in my first me speech that some of the ideas that, that, that should be captured in this strategy. So we'll go for that. Before that, your Excellencies, as I have told you, our partners are here. Uh, His Excellency, the Commissioner of International uh, Cooperation from European Union, uh, is uh, want to uh, 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 communicate with you. And Mr. Hans is here. Just, Mr. Hans, uh, if Chair, if you allow me, this, uh, let me ask Mr. Hans. Oh, let me let me take the opportunity to uh, uh, welcome Mr. Hans and to invite you uh, to uh, to speak uh, to this forum. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Honorable Minister. Thanks a lot, Executive Secretary General. Unfortunately, our Commissioner uh, Line is trying desperately to connect with this uh, conference. Uh, he is still trying. 
Um, I don't know whether there is a possibility that you just continue a little while, and if she managed to file in, that we can give her the possibility to speak. If not, I can, on her behalf, give a small statement, but I will definitely hope that she can still join you. So please continue, but if the commissioner managed to come in, uh, it would be great if you would get the opportunity. Thanks a lot. If not, I will make a small statement at the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, I think uh, let me let me have the executive secretary again to uh, uh, to tell us about uh, the preparation of the documents and if actually uh, the idea now is that we do have obviously the 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 document as well as the draft for action. Uh, so please give us some guidance as to how to proceed on this. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hans, thank you very much. We will expect the commissioner, if they come, uh, uh, they can take five, seven minutes to address this uh, very important gathering. We are very happy to do yes. by permission of the chair. Uh, let me uh, bring to your attention, Your Excellencies, the agendas that we try to uh, point out there. These are the, uh, the outline of the, collect the collective Igadrina response strategy of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm going to highlight some of the issues. Establishment of regional ministerial uh, task force to coordinate the response is already the, that what we have said. That is the, including the finance ministers, health ministers, and uh, Eager Secretariat, at the same time, we will uh, coordinate this effort as a Secretariat, Your Excellency. Mobilizing support from domestic and international community to respond to uh, COVID-19 and other economic impacts, Your Excellency. This is a decision based upon the decision of the heads of states and governments and the communique issued at that time. Uh, we, as IGAD, collectively we will uh, appeal, we will, we, will, we will approach to international community, all the partners that who are willing who, and already working with us, we will strategize the way how we are going to, 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 to uh, further communicate on this, this issue and we are working on it. The, about the cost, the budget and the mobilization issue, Your Excellency, that Already the ministers was talking about this very important issue, and we are working on it. After we already we already established this regional fund, this regional fund. After we got this one, how to relocate this thing to member states? That is one very important thing. If once we have the resource here, besides that, the national states they themselves are working very hard to combat these things, as all ministers have said. But in our side, we want to intervene in some of the areas that needs the attention of the collective attention for, with all, uh, uh, all member states, especially the area which we have said, the border area, refugees, uh, and other things. And we, as a minister from uh, Djibouti has said that we want to organize some kind of emergency team that will uh, help to reach the member states who may suffer a lot and mobilizing expertise, mobilizing resources and dispatching to the member states that regional task force will work this. These are the basic areas, but the very important outline, Your Excellency, on regional response strategy is Number one, as I have mentioned, Your Excellency, the strengthening of regional and cross-border coordination mechanism. That is the area that we are working on it. We will come, after we get the comment from uh, the ministers, we will come up with very uh, concrete picture and we will present to the next heads of the states and governments meeting. 
The second point is strengthening the national response system to detect and manage COVID-19 cases. That is uh, actually made by national, the, the, the member states. And that this is how to uh, support this thing. The third one is capacity development of national health authorities and strengthening regional response system by including vulnerable populations such as, which I have mentioned earlier, the refugees and IDPs. Uh, in international areas, or, or engaging international partners, uh, Your Excellency, and especially in economic areas, addressing the immediate social and economic impact of COVID-19. That is, we are working on it. What are the immediate impact of this COVID-19 in, in terms of microeconomy, in terms of social and economic areas? That we are working on it, and we'll. Uh, will we'll dispatch for member states and bring to the attention of the heads of the states and government when they soon after we finish this meeting, uh, they are going to convene very soon and we will bring this uh, result. Other one is putting in place economic protection and recovery measures after COVID-19. This is post-COVID issue, as uh, Excellency Ministers, you have said, really we don't know when, when these things are going to be uh, uh, end, but for sure, uh, the, the strategy we have to have is we have to strategize the post COVID impact in our economic, political, and social life of our region. That is a very important area that we need an input from you, Your Excellencies. The other one is strengthening regional emergency fund that is already we established and already we got the pledge from our partners. We are very uh, thankful for European Union and Sudan government already. They are uh, working in it and we need the member states also to strengthen this thing. This, this fund is going to be as, you know, backup for member states. The backup to, to support in the areas that the member states or a, a given country which needs such kind of assistance based upon prioritization of the criteria which we are going to make. So we need uh, your intervention and your comment on this area. The other one, Your Excellency, is how to minimize the risk of transmission in trade corridors. As you know, one of the lifeline of this region is the trade corridors. We have all that interconnected, the Karamoja uh, corridor, the Moyale corridor, Obok corridor, Galafi corridor, that the corridors that the Matama, Galabat corridor, these all corridors are a very important economic areas, Your Excellencies. So we cannot close this thing. That will create another, if, we, if, if something is happening in these areas, Your Excellencies, you can imagine that it is going to be really a big problem for, for member states. So how to make, how to minimize the transmission of this virus, how to intervene to these areas is also one, one strategy that we are uh, going to work on it. More or less, Your Excellencies, these are uh, uh, points that I want to bring to your attention. We need your feedback on these areas. Uh, we need from you any comments upon these areas and we consolidate based upon the comment that we get from you, from health ministers, we already yesterday we have taken uh, from health ministers and we consolidate this thing, Your Excellency, and finally we'll bring again to your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Executive Secretary. Um, uh, Mr. Minister, sorry, Hans Stauskul speaking. As far as I can see, our commissioner is now online. Is that okay. correct? Okay, please. I uh, would welcome the uh, commissioner to, uh, to, join, to join the meeting. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Are you able to speak me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, sir. I, I, unfortunately, I have uh, I had difficulties to get through, but uh, but now I'm here and I'm very honored to participate in your meeting. So um, I, I I appreciate a lot that uh, you allowed me to participate in your meeting. So um, 
Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, the COVID-19 virus knows no borders. It does not discriminate between communities, we know that. Uh, as you probably know, it has swept across Europe, taking lives and wreaking havoc. And uh, I can tell you, my friends, that we do not wish on you what it has visited upon us in Europe. This uh, virus is the first test to our Africa strategy, the strategy we adopted uh, one month ago. And I can tell you that I also see that uh, the strategy has the answer. Together, we can make a difference. And uh, I want to comment the leadership shown by IGAD and the member states. I really appreciate the leadership. The time is of the essence and IGAD has already moved with lightning speed. In the space of 10 days, you have had the summit meeting, a meeting of health ministers yesterday and now your meeting today. You are really, you have taken action. The European Union and IGAD, we know one another, another well. And it is a close partnership that goes back a long way. We understand one each other uh, because we know the difference a regional approach can make. Uh, we believe that IGAD can play a leading role uh, in coordinating efforts to combat COVID-19 in the region. Uh, dear ministers, your excellencies, uh, yesterday the Commission, the European Commission, together with the uh, European Investment Bank, announced it will be redirecting more than 15.6 billion, so uh, 15.6 billion euro to support the global COVID response. Our member states uh, will add their funds so that we could eventually reach more than 20 billion, so 20 uh, billion euro. Uh, 3.25 billion euro are for Africa. The package will include immediate humanitarian assistance, support uh, for the strengthening of healthcare systems, and also support the mitigation of the economic crisis. So this is mostly not new money. Funds will be drawn from programs that cannot be implemented as planned due to the pandemic. Uh, but if we look at, for instance, in East Africa and the Horn of Africa, 261 million will be redirected to support immediate healthcare response, and 475 million euro will be eased the economic and social consequences of COVID-19. The EU has been working closely with partner countries to identify their main needs. So, in addition to our response to individual IGAD countries, the EU is mobilizing an, an uh, added 60 million euro to support an uh, overarching regional initiative to contain and fight the pandemic, as well as uh, address the broader social economic impact. Uh, I know that IGAD has been working with health ministers, trying to fill any gaps in the national responses, and our services are closely working with the IGAD COVID task force to develop an intervention that, while responding to immediate priorities, uh, can also strengthen solidarity and bring benefits in the longer term. I think we all agree that health comes first, so the EU has been supporting and will support healthcare systems in several African countries. Both IGAD, the EU and our partners want to make sure that all, in, uh, that all are included in, in this support. So our programs providing vital services to migrants refugees, IDPs, and other vulnerable com communities will continue to deliver whilst adapting uh, to the current crisis. As a, as a former finance minister, I, I personally know that the functioning economy is the basis 
for sustainable society. That's the fact. So we need to preserve people's income, stimulate economy, support enterprises, access to finance and protect workers. So for instance, in Kenya, we will be front-loading our budget support operation to support domestic revenue mobilization. The EU is also uh, uh, ready to the joint appeal by the IMF and World Bank on a debt moratorium for the poorest countries. Uh, we are keen to support the proposal of Prime Minister Abi to work in a G20 context. And, and uh, dear ministers, I can personally inform you, I had a phone call yesterday evening uh, with the IMF director, Kristalina uh, Girgieva, and we had a very long discussion on debt release and uh, debt restructuring. And I ensured her that she will definitely support her in this accord. So uh, I, I, I can assure you that uh, this is our uh, common goal. Societies must work, therefore safeguarding social services and maintaining security is of course critical. Africa will bear the economic and social consequence of the global COVID pandemic and unfortunately extremists take an advantage of the crisis as well. So the EU is working with different partners to create reliable sources of information and avoid the spread of, of uh, rumors. We have shared objective in preserving stability in the Horn and preparing as best we can for the day when we emerge from this. This is, uh, this is a joint threat and uh, we need to be united in facing it down. Uh, so this is the moment to park any disputes uh, in the region and to look at the bigger picture. So dear friends, my message today is that as long as COVID-19 threatens life somewhere, we are not safe. We can and we must be a difference. Solidarity between African and Europe is more important than ever. So dear ministers, hand in hand, we can really tackle and win this crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner. As you just said, indeed, hand in hand, we will tackle this major global calamity. And I would like to say on behalf of my colleagues, the ministers, and on behalf of the uh, leadership of the IGAD. We are very heartened to, uh, to hear what you have just said, and we look forward to really working with uh, the EU and uh, to actually take advantage of this partnership together, all of us, we are facing the same crisis, and we could actually create uh, uh, some positive developments and take advantage of this crisis uh, and this adversity to settle our differences and to deal with the challenges that we have been facing as countries as well as uh, a community. Uh, so if the um, commissioner is still with us, perhaps maybe if uh, some of the members, the honorable ministers would like to say a few words, uh, uh, otherwise we can proceed with our agenda. Sure. Uh I appreciate the opportunity to participate in your meeting. As the former finance minister of Finland, I can tell you that I know how challenging your job is, and I wish you the strength in, in this very, very challenging uh, situation. Unfortunately, I am going to have a phone call now with the president of Kenya, uh, Mr. Kenyatta. So unfortunately, I am not able to stay longer in this meeting, but I'm looking forward to meeting you personally, maybe in, in the future when, when this crisis is, is over. So uh, excuse me, sir, I, I need to leave, <laughs> leave you, but uh, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Uh, I want to, we, still thank have, you. Uh, we still have hands with us, so thank you very much. Yes, the Chair, may, can I may make uh, one uh, request? I'm also leaving for some very urgent matter that requires uh, my attention. 
But uh, I just want to plead with you that uh, in our conclusion, one, two critical issues need to stand out. We need to agree on the issue of the debt, uh, because as it is now, it's going to put serious strain on us, and the issue of immediate budget support. I think those two critical areas that uh, they should form part of a bigger uh, resolution so that we approach it, uh, you know, from one uh, dimension. I want to thank you and ask for uh, permission now to go and look into something else, but otherwise, I subscribe uh, to the, the resolution of this uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Uh, if the Commission is still with us before she leaves, I would also like to highlight one additional issue regards to the situations regards to the situation of uh, my own country, Sudan, uh, but I guess uh, maybe South Sudan and Somalia as well, countries that are not yet in a position to access regular support from the IFIs. I think now is a, an exceptional time and it does require exceptional uh, consideration. Uh, and this is something that I know the EU uh, is concerned about and I hope that you would be able to push forward uh, in your conversations with the, the IFIs. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Uganda, just like to my colleague from Kenya, I've also got something else to handle in relationship to what we are talking about. Uh, I forgot only one point that is, I think there's a need uh, that we take more similar uh, measures uh, in fighting this uh, uh, disease. Because if we don't, for example, if we in Uganda are saying that we close down, and then we may be able to uh, control the spread of this uh, uh, disease. But the neighbors, the neighboring countries are doing it differently. I'm afraid we may be working in futility. So my prayer is that as much as possible, we should be able to combine and synchronize our actions so that when we, when we at the end of the day, we all come out victorious without necessarily having people who have yet the disease and they are infecting uh, the neighbor. Those of us who have got porous borders, it's impossible. We have tried, the army is around, but it's impossible to really prevent people from coming in from other countries. So I, I, I pray that we, 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 we harmonize uh, the actions as a region uh, towards to fighting and defeating this, uh, this, this, this disease. Mr. Chairman and the Secretary General and the friends, I thank you very much for the opportunity you have given us to express our views. And uh, as the, the, the lady from Europe says, uh, once we all take one action, I mean, once we, we, we hold our hands together, uh, for us here in Uganda, we believe uh, this, uh, this problem we can solve it sooner than later. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Please. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. For coming, uh, yes, please. Okay, so, uh, I fully also support uh, what the Kenyans have said, especially uh, for action uh, aside on the debt relief issue, restructuring, and also the need of the budget support, which is very important part of so we need to participate within the draft policy for action in that respect. Secondly, also on this cross border, uh, very well, uh, uh, regional cooperation. Uh, on this uh, cross, am I? Yes, I am discussing. Can you come? Can you come close to the micro? Yes, My, close to the microphone, please. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, hello? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. So what I'm saying is the debt relief aspect, the budget relief aspect has to be further strengthened uh, with, uh, with the call for action. So we need to have a separate section into that aspect. In addition, secondly, on the cross-border issues, especially the migration. Migrants now Ethiopia is being affected 
crews of some of the migrants are coming back at this very critical site. So we need to harmonize that. We need to take harmonize our actions in terms of border, cross-border areas. So, so IGAD has to be that as well. So it is addition from our side, Sophia, we call for the draft action. Thank you. Shall I, uh, shall I, uh, without kind of constraining uh, my colleagues here, uh, suggest that uh, unless someone, unless some of us would like to continue, to actually uh, agree to present our comments, uh, if we have, to this plan, which I think is quite 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 um, well thought out yeah. very well written uh, but if we have any further comments or suggestions we could send them over to uh, his excellency the executive secretary uh, and if you agree with me then we can move to the last item which is the approval of the uh, or the adoption of the call for action yeah. So are we are we are we in agreement to move forward? Uh, yes, 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 I agree. Okay. Hello, can I can I come in uh, Somalia? Mm -hmm. Hello, hello, can I can I come yes, in? Come in, come in, please. Uh, thank you very much. I think we have uh, come a, a long way and uh, had a very good discussion. It was also very nice. And reassuring to hear from the commissioner, it, the, the EU is always uh, very helpful, yeah, and I'm glad that uh, that she was able to come and and share with us the good news that they are, they are ready to us. I think to me there are two issues: something that we have in common, and I think that's the main reason we are here. How can we commonly fight? Uh, this this problem. That is one major issue. The second issue is how can we establish solidarity and help each country to fight its own internally. These are the two issues. I think both of them need a lot of technical work in costing and coming up with areas, principles, backgrounds, operational actions, and then the cost of each one of them is very, very important. Now, I see here a draft uh, call for action. I have a lot of comments on this. Uh, some, of, some of them may not be substantive, but I like to take the time and maybe before the end of the day, submit my, uh, my suggestions to, to the Secretariat, because now it would take a while. I want, us, I want to suggest something to reorganize some of the ideas here and to strengthen some of the ideas. But at the end of the day, uh, we have to come up with the specific areas of addressing commonly, and we have to come with a, with a price tag. And we have to agree on the principles on the basis of which we will establish a cost and a budget. We have to agree on specific areas, area or area. Now, if we agree in that generality, I heard the Secretary General saying that they are already working on it. But on what basis? But what is the basis for you working on this? I have not seen any. What is it going to be? What will it be the cost? What what is specific items are you are you looking at, and and which areas? I think we can contribute to this. But I wanted to have the opportunity to read this. I have read it already, but uh, submit it writing uh, highlighted pages to the secretary, if, if you don't mind, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think, I think the objective of this meeting is really, uh, has, was really, has really been to, first of all, uh, get together in this, uh, uh, you know, very fairest meeting of its kind, and also to share some broad thoughts and strategies. Yeah. But I gather that all of us uh, uh, will be incumbent on us to, to study these documents, especially the agenda that is outlined by the uh, executive secretary, 
I'm come up with concrete suggestions. Uh, and then for the executive secretary and his colleagues to finalize this and send it back to us again so that we could actually then uh, uh, use it as a framework to move uh, forward. Uh, so I think uh, this meeting essentially have actually served its purpose. And uh, uh, if you would allow me now to actually uh, suggest that we come to closure on this meeting and agree that we will be uh, sending our comments to the uh, secretariat and that uh, perhaps the secretariat will send us a much more uh, uh, specific uh, kind of agenda with, uh, with, with budgets and everything. Uh, uh, so I think that is really my take on this, but once more, uh, <coughs> I'll be happy to hear any other alternative suggestions regarding uh, this meeting. Your Excellency, yes, if, if you allow me, uh, thank you very much. This is the, uh, the very fruitful discussion and the conclusion. Uh, at the same time, <clears throat> this uh, call of action, Your Excellency, is a broad thing to have said very well. This is a roadmap that, that we are going to concretize based upon the discussion that we are making here and also the other, the health and other issues we'll bring together and we'll come up with. So I'm asking the ministers, uh, I really appreciate the comment from uh, Somalia uh, federal uh, government, the Minister of Finance. So these are the broad things that we are, we are, we are sketching from by this meeting. So uh, once you endorse this one, your excellencies, we are going to work the, the detailed one. So this is a broad guideline uh, and your permission uh, and uh, the guidance of your chair. Uh, I ask you to, to, to endorse this thing. If there is a comment, we will wait uh, until uh, tomorrow. So after that, we are combining these things to the meeting of heads of states and government. So we need your input. So the endorsement is very important thing, Your Excellency. I, I agree, I'll actually. I agree, that's actually what I meant to say, that actually uh, the, 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 we have two documents. One of them is the call for action, which is, as you said, is a broad statement of intent. But the other one, which actually sets the agenda, the other document, guiding ideas for, uh, to the economic agenda to respond to COVID-19, that is the one that I think would merit coming back later to you with a specific recommendations or comments or anything like that. But I agree with you that the, the call for action is a general statement of, uh, of, of intent. And I would second your, uh, your, your, your request to the uh, colleagues that we actually endorse, uh, endorse this call of action. Can I, can I, can I come in? Can I come in? Uh, Mr. Okay, Chairman, you could come in, but let me, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, let me just clarify one thing. I think the other document which says guiding ideas to the economic agenda to respond to COVID-19, this is a document which actually sets a specific agenda yes. that I think would merit our detailed comments if we have, uh, yeah. which we could send uh, later. But I think this draft call of action is just general statements about common issues that we all agree are necessary and is designed to reflect our collective uh, uh, agreements on these issues and intent. Uh, so unless, so with this understanding, please go ahead and, and let us know what you, what you want to say. No, I, I, I don't want to be seen that I am delaying the, the, the approval of this. I think there are some, some, uh, some areas that, that, uh, that need to be looked at. You, you can't just draft something and say, I prove it. I have not read it. I read it now. I have comments on it. And no I'm sure when you see it, before midnight, you will see it. Before midnight, today, you will see it. It's not delaying. Let's, in principle, agree, if you like. But there, there are certain, uh, certain sentences and sweeping generalities here that we can only improve. I mean, we are here to all contribute, right? Now, Mr. Chairman, I would say, Okay, I, I am part of the group, so I, I agree with the, with, with the general consensus, of course. But I, I was going to contribute. 
Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, uh, can I intervene? I think what we could do is to send our individual suggestion to the Secretariat so that the Secretariat goes and summarizes rather than put the, uh, the, the call to action into discussion again. Let us approve it and we send yeah. our collective, collect each individual suggestion to the Secretariat. This is, this is the way to be done. We cannot just again discuss the broad position. The broad position is for all of us, but each one has their own particular uh, position. So we send our uh, position, which you have read here before, to the Secretariat, and they will go and take what is common and then put, our, put, us, put everything into one common stand. I think it is the, the easiest way to put the whole region into one box. Mr. Right? Okay, can I come in? Hello, can I come in? Mas? Can I come in, Mr. Chair? I don't know. I think it's. Hello? Hello, can I come in? The chair, Mr. Chair. Can I come in? The chairman is not, uh, I think, not listening. This thing. Mr. Chair. The chair probably is disconnected. Maybe yes. Can I proceed on behalf of the chairman? Ethiopia is asking the floor. Yes. Yes. Okay. Go on, please. All right. So uh, I think we are saying the same thing. In principle, we endorse the call for draft, but we are saying it, it will be uh, cons the comments that would be forwarded from Somalia, from Ethiopia, from whatever to the Secretariat will be included and the then Secretariat will proceed. So we say we approve today, but all comments that are coming from individual country will be considered into the document, then we delegate this one to the Secretariat. So the Secretariat will finalize the document and then we will take into account all the comments coming forward. So with that, uh, so we delegate the Secretariat to include all of the comments, but we endorse now. So from my side, this approach is, I think what all the House Sudan Somalia says. So let's agree on endorsing, but also agree uh, to delegate the secretary to include additional comments into that document. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Djibouti. Can I, can I come in? Yes. Your Excellency, go on. Yes, uh, <clears throat> dear brothers, uh, I think uh, the, the, the meeting went very well. I here take opportunity to thank EU for uh, what it has been announced by Commissioner uh, Onyari. Uh, we are very much thankful. Again, we are uh, thanking uh, EGAT Secretary for uh, the leadership of organizing this together with the chair of uh, EGAT. At this point of time, with regard to the and call for uh, action. Uh, I suggest it's a matter of principle. There should not be any kind of uh, opposition or to add anything more. It's, this is only about principle. What we are calling is uh, for action within EGAT member, members and the community, and also asking for international community to come and support an EGAT initiative. So what will be very important is to keep uh, the path in terms of uh, communication among us and uh, to have more discussions about uh, the more consistent document, which will be how shall we organize the EGAD responses. I do believe we are all having the same 
urgency. We believe in our collective action will help us in prevailing against this in crisis. And uh, of course, cross-border uh, will be one of the major and, uh, and area where we must uh, look for instance uh, from Djibouti perspective with, the, with Somalia as well as um, with uh, Ethiopia. So the secretary, I mean, uh, Mr. Uh, Executive Secretary, what we will be looking from you is and how to fast track this process and how together in the more important document will be discussed and comment made by each and every member state. From the other hand, we are very much thankful to EU. We would like to also emphasize here how fast we should really implement what is going to be uh, the EGAD and uh, EU support to EGAD. And uh, Brother uh, Minister Abdurrahman, uh, at this stage, I, I don't believe there is a need of, you know, uh, going into the details of the de global declarations, unless something is making you uncomfortable and on the spot, look at what should be corrected. Otherwise, let us take as a uh, in principle, a declaration for EGAD member states, don't forget about our leaders are expecting the outcome of uh, our meeting today and let us organize properly because this is only the first meeting. In the next step, we will go into details and make sure that all the concern from each and every member state will be considered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellencies. Uh, based upon uh, the, the suggestion from Excellency Ministers, from Ethiopia and from Djibouti, from all of you, uh, let us conclude by endorsing this call of action and at the same time waiting the feedback or the comment from member states who have a comment upon these issues until tomorrow. We will expect any comments from member states until tomorrow morning. We are, uh, as uh, Minister Elias, as you have said, we are ready to include the comments and uh, any constructive things which help this uh, call of action. So if you agree, let us endorse this call of action and uh, we are ready to take uh, the comments from Excellency uh, Foreign Minister. Uh, Finance Minister of Somalia and even other ministers, if you have sent us until tomorrow. So let us conclude our, our meeting uh, at this point, Your Excellencies, if you allow. Finish. Wow. Thank you. Excellent. It was a great. Uh, yeah, we agree. We agree. Thank you, Thank you. all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, European Union, for the participation, for everything that you are supporting very closely with us in front of the ministers here. We are very thankful. And thank you, Excellency Ministers. You took your valuable time and you really contributed a lot. Uh, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Asante sana. Shukran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. everybody. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.